And it's great to have you join us on another edition of the only weekend business program on Channel Television, Capital Market uh, Live on Channel Television. I'm Laddie Williams. First of all, let's see how um, global markets uh, performed uh, to end um, that's for Friday. Let's look at European stocks now to close higher. Uh, following two positive sessions that have taken the regional benchmark uh, back towards its recent uh, record highs, the stock 600 uh, provisionally ended up 0.6%, with major bourses and most sectors uh, positive. Mining stocks led the gains uh, on Friday up over 2.5%. We saw UK retail sales uh, came in stronger than expected and a much-needed uh, glimmer of light for the economy. Uh, which uh, data showed has entered a technical uh, recession. We see the FTSE 100 there up 1.50% uh, for Friday. The DAX, uh, that was up 0.40%, 17,117 points, while the CAC 40, uh, that was up 0.32%, 7,768 points. Let's take it on to Asia now, where uh, stocks are broadly higher. As Japan's Nikkei 225 hit a fresh 34-year high. Investors are betting that the weak economy will cause Japan's uh, central bank to maintain its ultra-loose uh, monetary policy. Also, this comes after the country lost its spot as the third largest global economy uh, to Germany and reported a technical recession. Uh, we see there Nikkei uh, up 0.86%, Shanghai Composite 1.28% um, up, and we see the Hang Seng 16,339 points up 1.28%. Let's get a check on U.S. markets now. Uh, we see U.S. stocks were lower uh, on Friday after yet another hot inflation report, uh, which uh, stoked fears that the Federal Reserve rate cuts may not arrive until later uh, than anticipated this year. The S&P 500, that fell about 0.463%, uh, uh, while the Dow Jones was down 0.52%. Uh, the tech-heavy Nasdaq, uh, that was down 1.07%. Um, so we see that 17,721 uh, um, points uh, to finish. All three major indices uh, broke their five-week winning streaks to end the week in negative territory. The S&P uh, 500 ended um, the week lower by 0.40%, while the Dow slipped 0.11% um, for the week. All right, let's um, take it home now. See the NASD on listed securities market closed in green um, territory. The index rose by over 1.6% to close at 1,157 points. However, turnover uh, for the week was negative, with volume um, down about 83.79%, while value uh, traded dropped 61.52% uh, to 373 million naira. Um, Acorn Petroleum recorded the most significant gain as it rose by 10% uh, to close at 1 Naira, 10 Kaba. Uh, Geofluids uh, followed on that list as well as Aridol Holdings. Industrial and general insurance led the underperforming stocks with an 8.33% downtick. Also in that category, we see Central Securities Clearance System. Meanwhile, Geofluids topped trades by volume uh, as a result of uh, investors by interest. And now to the NGX. City. Uh, positive sentiment returned to the domestic equities market this week as investors re-entered the market despite profit-taking activities on banking stocks early in the week. Uh, the market remained in the green, um, green territory due to bargain hunting in Boa Foods, Antel Africa, and Girigou. As a result, the all-share index advanced uh, by nearly 3.8% week on week uh, with the month-to-date and year-to-day returns increasing to 45 and 41.4% each. Activity levels remained weak as trading volume and value declined by 36.8% and 23.8% week and week. Analyzing the sectors now, consumer goods, oil and gas, and insurance indexes advanced while the banking and industrial goods uh, counter that declined. Julie PLC topped the gainers chart for the week while Mayor PLC led the declining stocks. Meanwhile, the trio of UBA, Ebbin Holdings, and Guarantee Trust Holding Company Top trades by volume. All right, let's uh, get to the discussion now. Let's take a look at what drove um, sentiment uh, in the market and also some ma other major stories in the market. We're gonna also look, going to be looking at the cement industry. Why are the prices rising uh, so fast? Um, joining us for this conversation now is Abigail Alabi, research analyst at uh, Vetiva uh, Funds Managers Limited. Great to have you on the show. 
Thank you. Good evening. Thank you for having me. So I, I guess um, we could say it was a winning week uh, for the market. It's looking like investors are returning. Uh, at some point, uh, most analysts and you know, some you know, investors felt like maybe it was time for big profit taking and a major correction for the NGX. Well, it looks like that has, uh, that has stopped at this moment. The investors are back. Um, yes, yeah, so I won't say investors are done taking profit as investors are heavily hunting for attractive yields. And so, I mean, in this week, we saw that the equities markets gained in four out of five um, trading sessions. And we saw strong um, buying interest in stocks like Girigo and also in Boa Foods. And we also saw that the equities market gained about 3.79% week on week. So we expect these blue sentiments to return again in the next week as investors are still currently hunting for attractive yields. And we also expect investors to take position in highly fundamentally strong stocks and um, also to uh, get attractive yields as well. So we do not expect um, very sensible to continue next trading session or next week. We expect to experience bullish um, sentiments in the next trading session. That's on Monday. Right. So, but, you know, at this point, we got that um, red hot uh, inflation number for January. That's the first inflation data we're getting for 2024. It's, it's a big one now. So it's practically 30%, you know, at this point, if you approximate the number. Um, is this going to phase investors at all in this market? Um, so, I mean, it's a known fact that um, if high inflation can negatively impact or reduce um, real returns on investment, so investors should be looking into assets that would outpace inflation or that would give them real returns once inflation is accounted for in their investments. And one of these investment outlets is the equities market. And also, while the function in the currency and also inflation would um, erode returns, um, for long-term investors, long-term investors should be looking at investing in stocks or investing in companies that really have strong growth prospects and can even weather the short-term or can weather these current challenges and also in the long-term deliver value to investors. So, I mean, there are lots of opportunities in the investment and the capital market for investors who are looking to beat inflation also um deliver strong or deliver long-term value for investors, basically. So the equity market has an abundance of stocks across all sectors that can deliver strong value to investors and also beat inflation, too. All right. Also, uh, seeing new lows um, with the Naira, you know, at this point, at the official window and um, also at the uh, parallel market. Um, talk to me. Um, is it possible, you know, with the way 2024 is starting off, you know, looking at the inflation numbers and looking at um, the value of the Naira against um, the dollar, is it possible that investors will be able to uh, beat, you know, inflation, currency devaluation in 2024 with the way it's looking? I mean, we saw what happened last year. We saw that most investors beat inflation or even beat inflation last year. And we've seen very sentiments to the market since the beginning of this year. And I think that was some continent. Like I said, investors are severely or heavily hunting for stocks that will deliver returns. So we are seeing lots of domestic investors really go into the domestic market, and that has been driving up volumes, and that's also been driving up prices as well. So most likely see a, a huge influx of investors into the domestic market, and that will drive investors. That will also drive yields as well. And most investors are not just taking it or not just investing in penny stocks, they're investing in fundamentally strong stocks, stocks that have really strong prospects and stocks that have that can deliver long-term value. So I mean over the long term, we expect that or throughout this year, we expect that most stocks or some stocks on the exchange will deliver or worst pace inflation for investors, most long term investors most basically. Because uh, with the way um with the current weakness we're seeing uh, with the Naira, it almost seems like um, investors might not be able to beat both heavyweights at this point. It looks like it'll be easier to actually maybe outpace inflation, but it seems currency devaluation is another, you know, kettle of fish. Do you think investors can beat currency um, yes, devaluation? Yes, and that's that's a huge problem as well. Currency devaluation switch. Um, I mean, the federal government or the CBN or most bodies that are involved are trying to at least rein in this high or rein the pressure on the exchange rate. So I believe that given all the efforts or all the um, strategies from the CBN and also from the federal government, we expect that some of these um, strategies or some of these things will yield positive results and in the long term ease the pressure on the exchange. 
And we also see some investors. We also seen high um, yields in the fixed income market as well. So we are seeing investors heavily hunting for yields across both sectors, across both spaces. So I mean, if the equities market is also doing, we've also seen increased yields in the fixed income market as well. So I think the federal government tries to hike yields in the fixed income market also appeal to investors, or to also appeal to investors of foreign inflows as well. So I mean, we expect most of these strategies to yield positive by the end of the year. Give all things work, all, all things being equal. Yeah, and what would you say would be the indicator that would show that investors are steadily moving away uh, from the equities market into the fixed income market? What should we be looking at? Um, so may probably reduce the volumes. I mean, over the since the beginning of the year, we have seen increased volumes in the equities market, and we saw that happen in the last trading session as well. So one key indicator for a shift or a transition to the fixed income market would be volumes. So if you are seeing lots of profit taking as well in the equities market, it's most likely an indicator that investors are switching to the fixed income market. If you're also seeing lower volumes than what we used to see before at the beginning of the year. That's also an indicator that investors are switching to the higher yields or higher rates in the fixed income market. All right. Just to get a, a, a quick outlook now, what are you seeing uh, for the equities market um, next week, you know, at this point? Do you still see um, this the bullish sentiment we saw this week? Do you see that carrying in um, to next week? And what um, stocks or sector do you see shining next week? Um, so, like I said, we still expect bullish sentiments to take over in the next week. Um, like I said earlier, investors are severely hunting for investor or returns or stocks that would um, investment outlets that would beat inflation. So, I mean, in the previous week or in this last week, we saw that Girigu and Barfoods really um, went up last in this last trading session. So, we expect these bullish sentiments to filter into next week. I'm um, giving and also, I mean, pending the gradual penny that's anticipated during the fixed income market will most likely see investors still hold their position in the equities market. All right, let's look at another burning issue now. Uh, price of uh, cement. We've seen um, almost a 100% uh, jump, you know, when you compare to um, last year. And definitely everything seems to be going up at this point, you know, looking at um, goods. Um, talk to me about uh, cement prices. What's driving and the price is so high. Is it just good old inflation? Um, so, I mean, it's no news that cement prices have been increasing significantly over the past few months. And there are some, or these are the key factors that have been driving the rise or the price of cement. Number one is input costs. So, several input costs for cement prices have increased significantly, actually, energy costs. And again, some of these producers use coal, which is primarily imported, and also fluctuate to the global market, or the price of coal fluctuates to the global market. And so given the rise in geopolitical tensions, we have seen this fluctuation in the price of coal, um, and also the weakness in Naira also affect the price of coal. And also we've seen that since Naira has been weakening over the last few months, that has imported, or that has impacted the cost of importation of coal. And gas as well, another key energy source for cement producers, is also linked to the um, foreign exchange, also FX linked. And given this depreciation in currency as well, has also impacted the prices of gas and also cost of production. Um, other cost inputs like raw materials, that's for raw materials, that's something like gypsum, and also for their papers and equipments, they are all also imported. And since they are much more vulnerable to FX fluctuations, we have seen an increase in those prices. And also distribution costs for cement producers has also been increasing. I mean, in their last quarter results, I mean, their last year results, we saw a broad-based increase in haulage costs across the industry and that cost of raising expenses to increase for all cement producers. So as a result, in order to maintain profitability and also to preserve their margins, we have seen cement producers pass on this increased cost in form of prices as to consumers. So that's one of the key reasons that we have seen or one of the drivers, or these are the drivers we have seen of higher cement prices right now in the economy. Yeah, because we're seeing uh, some crazy prices there from 7,000, uh, we're seeing 9,500. So um, definitely this will have uh, a huge impact, you know, on the real estate um, industry. But we're going to take a quick break now. I'm still going to have um, Abigail Alabi. Uh, She's going to continue uh, to give us insights on this uh, uh, cement market right after this break. Don't go anywhere. Do stay with us.
Welcome back. We'll continue the conversation there, seeing um, how high cement prices have jumped uh, so far um, uh, this year. I still have Abigail Alabi, research analyst at Vetiver uh, Fund Managers uh, Limited, uh, bringing us up to speed on what's driving prices and what to expect um, going forward. Thank you for staying on. Thank you for having me. All right, so we see the Nigerian um, government there uh, summoning uh, Dangote, Boa, and Lafarge uh, companies over escalating prices. Um, do you see uh, this yielding, you know, anything? You know, do you see uh, prices coming down, you know, after the uh, giants actually answer the government? Um, so one key thing is, unless cost is being addressed, we most likely know system prices will lower because, I mean, cost is one major factor that has caused an increase in the prices of um, cement. I mean, cement providers are really, really trying to protect their margin and also maintain profitability. So until cost is addressed, which they are currently doing now, we'll most likely see elevation in cement prices continuously. All right, let's let's look back, you know, at um, the, the cement industry uh, for um, sub-Saharan Africa. Let's look at 2023. Um, I know you guys did a report on on that. Uh, give me some insights um, to what you found uh, in the uh, sub-Saharan African region uh, for that market. Okay, so we currently in Kenya and also in Ghana. I mean, South Africa as well, majorly South Africa. South Africa has had a really, really tough 2023. Um, one of the major factors that caused the slowdown in construction activity in South Africa is load shedding. I mean, last year was really the worst that we've had in the last few years. I mean, load shedding has started since around 2014 in South Africa, and that has impacted the construction activities that they've had. And last year was really the worst they've had, and that also slowed down construction activities. But the so government of South Africa is still very, very committed to increasing um, infrastructure development and also trying to um, ease the impact of this load shedding on the sector. And for Ghana, as we're going to have a good first half of the year in the economy, we had um, severe, so we had increased um, infrastructure development in Ghana. But towards the second half of the year, we saw increased costs that affect the Ghanaian economy. And for Kenya as well, Kenya was expressing um, a double whammy or expressing a double edged sword, being that they had currency depreciation and they also increased the export levy on the importation of clinkers. So both factors combined severely impacted the cost of production for cement producers in Kenya. And that also caused a slowdown in the construction activity in Kenya as well. So, I mean, Kenya is currently experiencing double um, problems right now in the economy. But like I said, most countries in the sub-Saharan Africa is still very, very committed to increasing infrastructure development as it's expected to drive um, economic growth and also developments in that area. So we are still being watchful of what is going to happen in this year if the ambitious, um, if government's ambitious goals on infrastructure development would continue or still if it See the government implements this in South Africa. I'm still very cautious about that. We're still looking on to the South Africa to see if that would happen. Yeah, and when you look when you look at the cost of uh, of houses, um, homes in in 2023, we've seen big jumps. You know, due to um, inflation and currency devaluation at this time. But what we're seeing uh, with cement in the early part of 2024, what are you seeing coming for the real estate sector in 2024? Um, so for the real estate sector, I mean, higher cement prices will definitely increase the um, construction cost for the real estate sector. And this leads to higher project cost and also um, potentially reduced profitability for real estate developers. And also this can also discourage new construction projects and also slow down real estate activities and also affecting the supply of housing in the market. And also this, like you said, it has affected house affordability. I mean, high cement prices has currently contributed to the overall cost of, or currently contributes to the overall cost of housing, and it has made it much more expensive for individuals or families to even afford houses, especially for low income or middle income households. So we've seen that the high cement prices has really impacted the price of housing, and also will make costs or has dampened activities in the real estate market. Yeah, definitely a tough time to be an import. Um, dependent uh, country at this point. Hopefully, uh, we're tracking the the summons and see how uh, what it yields. You know, going forward, you know, for that uh, for cement prices um, in Nigeria. Thank you for um, coming on, Abigail Alabi, research analyst at Vetiver uh, Funds Managers uh, Limited. Thank you for spending your Saturday with me. Thank you for having me.
All right, now let's uh, look at some top stories um, this week. Following the increase in customs duty rate by 2.6% by the central bank, uh, from 1,444 Naira to uh, um, dollar to uh, 1,481 um, Naira 48 Cobalt, the House of Representatives is uh, proposing uh, what it believes should be uh, a solution for indiscriminate exchange rate adjustment for customs and excise duties. The House reached a resolution that the Central Bank of Nigeria should maintain the system exchange rate uh, for customs duty and excise duty purposes below 1,000 Naira to a dollar. Preferably 951 Naira 90, 94 uh, Kaba to $1. Take a listen. Alarm that the Central Bank of Nigeria experienced a series of exchange rate adjustments for custom duties within six months in 24 June 2023. The rate increased from 422 Naira 30 Kaba per dollar to 589 Naira to a dollar, followed by 770 Naira 88 Kobo to a dollar on July 6, 2023. 783 1.74 Kobo to a dollar on November 14, 2023. 951.941 to a dollar on December 7, 2023, and a double adjustment on February 2. And third, 2024, reaching 1,356.833 cover to a dollar and 1,413.62 to a dollar, respectively, illustrating excessive fluctuations and volatility in the current market, raising significant concern about business planning and economic stability. Worried that due to the frequent custom exchange rate hikes, Nigeria importers are shifting towards ports in Tema, Ghana, Lume, Togo, Kotonou, Beni Republic, causing a substantial 65% decrease in cargo importation and businesses' activities at the Nigerian seaports. With daily container examination dropping from approximately 250 to just about 80. All right, to the oil industry. Now, Nigeria's oil production uh, rose to 1.427 million barrels per day in January, and that's according to latest um, data from OPEC. The figure contained in the oil cartel's uh, monthly oil market report represents the highest production level since uh, March. Meanwhile, the chief executive of Nigerian Upstream uh, Petroleum Regulatory Commission, uh, Mr. Gbenga Komalafe, says Nigeria has the potential to produce 2.2 million barrels of crude per day. We actually roll out a number of initiatives uh, which we are currently uh, backing up on in collaboration with the operators, uh, such as uh, uh, monitoring, that is the work program, more than it has ever been done, uh, collaboratively, uh, and backing on uh, using enhanced uh, oil recovery technologies, identifying uh, candidate wells, uh, especially at this critical moment that can, is, I mean, I mean, that can, uh, I mean, be re-entered, you know, in a manner that we can close uh, uh, the gap. And more importantly, you remember we have uh, rolled out the um, we've rolled out the metering regulation. You understand? All aim at enhancing hydrocarbon account in a manner that we can cut barriers of leakages. All right. And uh, Africa will account for 11 of the world's 20 fastest growing economies in 2024. And that's according to the Africa Development Bank. The projection was contained in FDB's latest macroeconomic performance and outlook for the continent in 2024 on the sidelines of the 37th African Union Summit in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. A lot more effort needs to be put into domestic resource mobilization. Uh, the domestic resource mobilization is hinged on the development of the local capital markets. And so we have to do a lot in terms of that, raise uh, 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 financing local capital markets to meet the rising expenditure needs of our countries. That's the first point. The second point is the rising debts have caused so many countries, uh, which has been worsened by the weakening of the domestic currencies, requires a reasonable balance to be achieved between the external and domestic borrowing. I mean, infrastructure, that you need to borrow to do infrastructure. So if you're borrowing to do infrastructure, but if the 
assets that you have are in local currency and you're borrowing continuously in, uh, in foreign currency, you're going to have a real problem. I think that's one of the challenges that we have. So developing that uh, local currency financing, it's very key for us to match the, the, uh, the, the, the revenue streams to, uh, uh, to, to the cost of financing that we are having. That was the AFDB president, Dr. Akiwumi Adishno. Well, that's the show today. That's how your money performed um, this week. And the top stories um, this week. Remember, you can watch this again on our YouTube channel. Just flip over to YouTube and search for uh, Channel Television. Thanks for watching. I'm Laddie Williams from me and the team right here at Channel CHU. It's bye for now.